Well, thank you for joining us for this edition, and, and this is the last edition of uh, the Christian Mindset in a Culture of Chaos. Uh, we have come to you with, uh, again, this is with the introduction, 14 different messages that hopefully is helping us to learn how to live as Christians in a world that is filled with chaos and confusion. And uh, I'm going to end this one with a relatively short message. Uh, I'm going to read to you uh, what I've written on this subject, and I've entitled this last one, Faith, Perseverance, and Hope. And so I hope you will uh, listen carefully to what I'm trying to convey here in this last message to us, and, um, and then we'll leave it with you uh, for the entire series. Faith, Perseverance, and Hope. I have good news and bad news. The bad news is, is that what the world is going through is not new, and it will not be the last time that we go through it. The good news is that the kingdom of God in this world can exist in every age. The kingdom lives off of faith, perseverance, and hope. Kingdom people float above the earth, or as Paul says, we are seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. In the words of the old hymn, the world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Like Abraham, we are looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God, Hebrews 11 and verse 10. With them, those people of faith, we desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one, Hebrews 11 and verse 16. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them, Hebrews 11 and verse 16. Our vision is fixed heavenward. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of, of the earth, Colossians 3 and verse 2. The Christian mindset is a mind set on heaven. We do not expect Eden or paradise here. We can work to create better, but we know best is in the world to come. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. Yes, Jesus is coming back. There is a day of reckoning where all the injustices of the world will be set straight. Jesus set the example. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. 1 Peter 2 and verse 23. Paul told the wise philosophers in Athens, he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead, Acts 17 and verse 31. Our hope is not in seeing all wrongs righted in this life. We end with Paul's words to Titus, For grace, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny godliness, godlessness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of the great God and Savior Christ Jesus. This is the Christian mindset. It is a mindset on the world that is to come. It is a mind that knows and understands that this world is going to be chaotic and it's going to be confusing and it's not our permanent home. It is a mindset that says that our hope is in heaven and that there will be a day when God will judge all men and that he will adjudicate every injustice and he will bring everything to light and he will make everything come out the way it's supposed to. In this world, nothing will be fair. But in the next world, where God rules and reigns and where there is no sin, where there, where there is no death, where there is no crying and weeping, there is nothing to cause us pain and hurt and offense, in the next life, everything will be equitable. 
everything will be right because we will have returned to the Eden from which we originated. I hope you will keep in mind that some things do not have to be worked out here. They can be worked out and will be worked out when Jesus comes again. And until then, let us keep the Christian mindset in a culture of chaos. This mural that you see behind me is very special to me. A few years ago, we had a, a student youth intern who came to our church and stayed with us for a summer. He and my son made this mural. And it's, to me, it's very beautiful. It um, has very much a lot of meaning to me. When I see this, mural, it reminds me of the faith that my children have, and it reminds me of the central theme of our lives, the cross. I often will sign my letters because of a cross. That cross is a symbol of hope and is a, a symbol of salvation. However, that cross also represents something else. It represents pain. It represents suffering. It represents hurt. We have taken a journey over the last several weeks as we have talked about the Christian mindset in a culture of chaos. And I've really appreciated taking that journey with you and exploring the different aspects of how we can think as Christians in a world that seems to be so crazy. And it's so important for us to give thought to our ways so that we're not just caught up in the chaos of the times. 
So thank you for joining me on that journey, but it's time to start a new journey. Yes, there's always another series. And I am hopeful that this new series will speak to your heart. We've entitled this series, A World of Hurt. It will be a series that will premiere next week at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And we really hope that you'll join us for that series. But I want to give you just a short introduction so that you'll kind of know a little bit of why we're doing this and what's ahead. So I want to introduce to you today a World of Hurt training series. This world is hurting. You're hurting. I am hurting. Your next door neighbor is hurting. There's a little child on the other side of the world is hurting. Hurt is common to man. It comes in all shapes and sizes. It can be a one on a scale of 10, or it might be a 10. It drives people to self-medicate, to spend thousands on doctors and therapists, to pray for relief, and in some cases to commit suicide. It is physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. It can scar us, it can torture us, it can bother us, it can nag us. It can interfere with our lives, it can interrupt things that are important to us, it can stab us in the heart, and it often prevents life from being lived to its fullest. We call hurt by names like pain and suffering and misery and agony and trouble. Its cousin is stress, or as I learned many years ago, more precisely, it is distress. It weighs us down. It cripples us. It causes tears and sleepless nights. We cry for relief. We do strange things to get others to notice that we're hurting. Often hurt people hurt people. We sometimes deny it or avoid it or take it out on others. It can be passed on from one generation to another. It can be group hurt or it may be a very private hurt deep within our own souls. Some simply want to fix it. Others wish it just go away. Others offer platitudes like, be tough, suck it up. Nobody wants to hear it. Children often can't describe it, and old people merely accept it. But most of us would love to understand it and to find some meaning and purpose in it. There's a man named Archimedes. This statement is attributed to him. If you give me a place to stand and a fulcrum and a lever long enough, I can move the world. In this series, you're going to learn to stand in grace and truth to use the fulcrum of your hurt along with the lever of faith to move your world of hurt and make a difference in your life and in the lives of many others. Jesus will show us how God can leverage hurt so that something good will result. I sure hope you will join us for this training. It's going to be a great journey. We're going to look at a lot of different aspects of what hurt is all about, the kinds of ways that people hurt, and then what is God's solution and how does God deal with our hurts and how does he use our hurts, not only to help us, but to help other people. So again, thank you for joining us for the, for the training that we just finished on a Christian mindset. And we offer you this new series, A World of Hurt, and I pray it will be a blessing to you. So I'll see you all next week. Take care.